Hello, so today we're going to do a fundamental analysis on Walmart. Walmart has a market cap of 444B and its share price is $165 as of today. So let's take a look at the numbers. The first thing I always like to look at is the revenue. And you can see that the revenue is more than the market cap. Even in 2014, it had a revenue of 476B. Right now, the trailing 12 months is 638B. Usually, I like the revenue to double every 7 years. But even after 9 years, you can see that Walmart's revenue did not double. If the revenue doesn't double, then the only other way that the company will be in good growth is that if its margin actually improves. But you can see that the gross profit did not increase by much over the years. In 9 years, it only increased about 30 to 40 B, even though the revenue increased around 130 to 150 billion. Its operating income stayed even more stagnant. In 2014, it had 26.8 B and right now it is 26.1 B. So we can see that the revenue went up 160 B, but the cost of revenue also went up 120 B, leaving only 40 B of difference in gross profit. And from that 40 B, you can see that the difference is over here in total operating expenses of about 37 billion over here from 128B to 91B. And I'm just like estimating. So I guess after it's all said and done, the revenue increase did not actually equate to operating income because there's a negative 700 million in operating income when comparing Gen 2014 to the trading 12 months. Interest expense has roughly stayed the same at 2.6B versus 2.3B and I'm guessing that they have a decreased net debt because interest rates have been slightly higher than compared to in the past. So let's take a look later when we are looking at the balance sheet. Yep, so net income roughly the same or slightly decreasing but we can see that the EPS actually went up a bit from $4.90 to $6 and it's likely due to the share count decrease from 3.2B uh, to 2.7B. The dividends we will take a look later as well but we can see that it's slightly increased from $1.88 to $2.27. Payout ratio is slightly the same from 38% to 37%. Seems like they have stores outside of the US um, but it seems like it's also not doing too well dipping in revenue from 137B to just 102B right now. And this is with all the inflation that's been going throughout the years. So for their balance sheet, you can see that they have 12.1B in cash and short-term investments, which is very little compared to their market cap and especially compared to their revenue. It's nice to see that their total assets is slowly increasing. Ooh, so their net debt has actually increased from 49B to 59.8B. Not what I expected, but it means that they probably have a good rate on their loans, which is always a good thing. It's also nice to see that their total employees is actually going down in number to just 2.1 million while increasing its revenue. And it could be that there's some type of equipment or machinery or whatever that helps with um, reducing the amount of manpower needed. Finally, let's take a look at their cash flow. Net income in the trailing 12 months is 16.3B. Their levered free cash flow is only 10.3B. Free cash flow per share has also increased from $3.10 to $4 to $4.71. So if we take their share price of 165 and we divide it by their free cash flow per share, we get 35. So basically just based on its trailing 12 months numbers, it would take them 35 years to generate its stock price from its free cash flow per share. I actually don't have to do this manually, but I like to do it just to be sure because Seeking Alpha um, actually does the calculations as well which I will show you guys in a bit. And if we use EPS numbers, then we will get a price to earnings of 27 times. So sometimes there's always like a difference between what I get versus what Seeking Alpha writes. So it's 25 here, but for example, I calculated 27.2 and the stock app 
calculates 27.46. But anyways, when investing, it's always just a very rough estimation. We try to get our estimation as accurate as possible, but in the end, it is always just an estimation. Because anyways, the earnings report is usually reported a couple of months later. And from that point to the time we receive the earnings report, there's a lot of like information lag. So therefore, even if you are very accurate, if you don't have the first hand numbers or if you're not on the floor itself, then you won't be able to get accurate numbers. And if you don't get accurate numbers, then basically it is just an estimation. The price to sales for Walmart is actually pretty damn good with its revenue actually being higher than its market cap. However, the problem for me with Walmart is that its margins is very low and it seems like as it increases its revenue, the cost also increases as well and there isn't that economies of scale factor that plays in. Even though it is already such a large scale, it seems like their margins cannot increase. And just according to the numbers, it seems like the company is going to be pretty stagnant even though it increases its revenue. So unless they find a way to actually increase its margins, it's going to be a pretty stagnant company in terms of earnings. Its price to cash flow is actually pretty decent at 13.75. And if we take its price to free cash flow, then it is at 37 then its price is 37 times its free cash flow. Growth-wise, its revenue is only increasing at roughly 4% in the past 5 years. And it is pretty bad given how it only tracks or slightly beats inflation. And in the past few years, inflation has been pretty high. So it may or may not be even on track to beat inflation. Walmart's dividend growth rate is also not very high at just 1.52% on average in the past five years. And so we can see that actually the company has grown its dividend for a very, very long time. But it seems like ever since 2013, it has been pretty much stagnant. So all things considered with the numbers that I just went through, I don't think that Walmart is actually worth 27 times its earnings or 37 to 35 times its free cash flow. And it seems like if I want to double my money at least every 7 years, and given how it seems like Walmart is going to be stagnant over the coming years, I would say that its fair value would be somewhere between 7 times its earnings to 10 times its earnings. Meaning to say the stock price should be roughly around 42 to $60. And if I were to purchase Walmart with a good margin of safety, I would likely purchase it between 5 to 6 times its earnings, meaning to say that the share price should be around $30 to $36, which is honestly pretty crazy given that it is right now $165 and it is already selling at below its revenue. But just based off of an earnings perspective, because it doesn't really matter if you have a lot of revenue but none of it translates to actual earnings, because if there's no profit, then the asset is basically not increasing in value. So it seems like every single company that I have been analyzing so far from the top 100 US companies, that it is always overvalued. And I think it actually could mean a lot of things. That it could possibly mean that the entire market right now is overvalued. Or that maybe we are in a situation whereby because a lot of these bigger companies are actually in the index funds and due to almost every single retail investor believing in index funds, it could be that there is an overvaluation in the higher market cap companies because as we know, indexes work by increasing its weightage as a company also increases its weightage in the index and therefore we always get the larger companies becoming larger and larger based on market cap and therefore increasing even more in market cap just due to the indexes being heavily weighted on those companies itself. But of course, these are just guesses and you could say that my criteria for buying a company is actually very strict and we would never get these prices in our lifetime. But I think we should always keep our stock searching metrics roughly the same and slowly be improving it rather than being lenient just because the market doesn't offer any opportunities. A price to earnings ratio 
of 30 would mean an earnings yield of around 3.3%. And to me, a 3.3% earnings yield on your money is pretty low. You might as well just get a real estate property and you might be able to get 3.3% in rental yield probably quite easily and you can even get higher than 5%. And let's not forget that real estate can also be leveraged on. So you're likely getting even more from your property itself just because real estate is slightly more stable and you can leverage on it more safely. And at this point, if you're going to get a stock for a price to earnings of 30, then you might as well just get real estate. And in contrast, if you find a company that is selling at a price to earnings of 5, that would mean your earnings yield is 20%, which is very, very high because just based on the earnings yield itself, you would double your assets value in five years time. And that to me is something that is worth purchasing. And I know everything is relative. Some people might think that Walmart is a steal right now just based on the revenue. But for me, I value the earnings more. And with everything that I've said so far, I would give Walmart a sell rating. Not because it is not stable, but just based off of earnings itself. And one last thing before I end off the video, I feel like people always think that stable means safe. But for me, if the company is growing, then it means it is safer than just being stable. Because stable is just another word for stagnant. And the next step after being stagnant is or could be declining. And at its current price right now, it is being priced as a growth company, which doesn't really make sense at all because it is a stagnant company. But the story would be very, very different if it was being priced as a declining company, even though it is actually just stagnant. So for me, as of right now, there are so many other opportunities. And if I own Walmart right now, I would definitely sell it to purchase some other companies. And with that, thanks for watching. Goodbye.